Thank you very much, Greg. I'm going to sit on the stage if you don't mind. Um, you don't really have a choice, but I'm going to sit here. Um, so, with it being Transformation Sunday last week, um, it's the first Sunday since Lent. Um, and Lent 1, the story is normally Jesus being tempted in the wilderness, um, which is an important story to cover on, and I'm going to talk about it a little bit today. I'm also going to diverge from it. Um, but the wilderness is a very common meeting ground in the Bible. Um, it's a place where often Jesus... No, no, Jesus, sorry, people um, encounter God, um, and it's something that's really special in the Bible, um, but there's a way that that conveys into our life, which I think is really cool. Um, so in the story um, that we get read in Lent 1, um, when Jesus is in the wilderness, um, Satan comes to him and he says to him, and don't quote me on this because it's not going to be the right words, but he basically says, um, you're the man of God, if you're hungry, turn this rock into a piece of bread. And Jesus says, no. Um, and so he spends these 40 days in the desert um, being filled with temptation by Satan. Um, he's tempted to turn food into things um, and provide for himself. He's tempted with power and he's tempted with dis um, to disobey God. And aside from us turning rocks into food, these other temptations are something that we can often encounter in our lives, um, whether that be in a workplace or in a school or whatever environment you find yourself in, it's easy to be tempted into power and disobeying. Um, but in the Bible, the desert is a place where people come when they're feeling temptation and doubt um, and distance from God. And it's a really hard thing. There's a lot of significance of, around the wilderness in the Bible. Um, and often in times in our lives, we encounter what I like to call a desert season, um, like the people in the Bible where we feel distant from God and um, really doubtful in his presence in our lives. Um, and that can be a really hard thing, um, whether you're feeling lonely um, or whatever. It's definitely something that everyone has felt once in their life, in their faith journey, um, just distance from God. Um, but in the Bible, the desert is also a really good place. Um, the slaves were led through the desert as they were freed from Egypt. Um, the desert is where God spoke to Abraham. It's where he spoke to the Israelites when he told them to go to Sinai. Um, and Moses and John the Baptist and Elijah all had really powerful encounters with God in the wilderness. Um, and so it takes this place of immense vulnerability and discomfort to a place where God becomes the calling voice and our source of comfort. Now, doing my research, and I feel like Greg would be pr very proud of me for this, I looked up the Hebrew, the original definitions of the words in the Bible. Um, and I don't know, this fact surprised me, but there's no vowels in the Hebrew alphabet, which I didn't know, which makes a lot, se lot of sense now that I know that. But um, the Hebrew word for desert was midbar, and it was spelled M-D-B-R. And the same word in, or not the same word, but in Hebrew, the word to speak is spelled medaber, and it's spelled M-D-B-R. Um, so they have the same spelling if you picked up on that. And I think it's, it's really special that desert and to speak in their original language both are the same word. Um, and I think that that just shows more correlation between the fact that when we're in these desert seasons, in these seasons of drought, that um, the the presence of God is there even more so speaking to our lives. So to look at it in the Bible, um, Jesus entered the desert um, when he was tempted towards the end of his ministry, but he also entered the desert right before the beginning of his ministry. Um, before his sort of call to public ministry, he spent a lot of time in the desert and he, um, where he was called by God and he had an encounter with God and talked to God. Um, and so he was called to the midbar so that God could medibur, which is just the cool thing. Um, he was called into the wilderness by God so that God could speak into his life. Um, another really common story of someone in the um, wilderness in the Bible is Elijah, um, who was running from his problems. The king at the time was going to kill him, and he, I feel like any sane person, ran away. Um, I, yeah. Um, 
but God met Elijah in the desert with a very thought out set of criteria um and so it's in um first kings 19 if you're interested but um the first thing god does when he encounters elijah in the desert is he meets his physical needs um so he gives him food and water um and the strength the next thing he does is he asks elijah what he's doing he listens to his frustrations and he talks back to elijah then he gives a fresh awareness of himself he makes himself known to elijah um, and in the Bible, it's done in this really radical way. He takes Elijah up to a mountain, and there's an earthquake and all these big land things happening. Um, and the thing that gets to Elijah is at the end of that, there's a whisper from God, and that's what really spoke to Elijah. Um, so God revealed his fresh awareness to Elijah, Elijah um, with a whisper. And then he gives him a new direction. He tells him to get his eyes up and away from the problem. But the, there's a common thread of people of God encountering people in the desert where he meets them in the desert. He meets their physical needs, he asks them what they're doing, and then he gives them somewhere to go. So meets, asks, gives. Um, and that goes for every single um, time God encounters someone in the Bible, or in the desert, sorry. Um, and he does that in our lives. Sorry, my page is going to fly away. Um, he meets us, he asks us, and he gives us. Now, being general human beings, we tend to avoid discomfort. Um, no one really wants to be in an uncomfortable situation. I definitely get out of them as quickly as I possibly can. Um, and as someone who is socially awkward, as most of you would know, um, I definitely avoid discomfort in social situations. I don't want to talk to people that aren't entertaining me because I just get really awkward. Um, and so I avoid discomfort in that sense, but you can avoid discomfort when you're feeling burnt out, you're feeling tired and pointless and lonely. These are all discomfort feelings as well. It's not just physical discomfort, but it can be mental discomfort as well. And those are times when we feel really distant from God, when we burn out from work or school or we're physically exhausted and we don't have the energy to meet God um, or we're feeling lonely and abandoned, um, maybe you've lost a friend. Those are times when we feel that God's really not loving us very much. So in the Bible, like David, he couldn't escape his problems. Abraham ran to the desert because he wasn't sure what was next. Moses was overwhelmed by responsibility and Elijah was just burnt out and scared of someone coming to kill him which not quite applicable, but all these things, whether you can't escape problems, you don't know what's next, you're overwhelmed, are times where we tend to distance ourselves from God. We feel that we're not really capable to be in his presence. And God takes those inherently bad situations and turns them into the good situations. Um, a lot of the times when we're in discomfort and we're burnt out and we're tired, we feel very isolated. And for seasons where I've felt very distant from God, it's been my only focus. You feel down about yourself a lot. Um, and it can be a really hard thing to get yourself out of that mindset. But this can actually be good when God's looking to transform our lives because we're away from distraction. Our only focus is, I can't see God in my life, what's going on? And although it's a really horrible feeling as a human being, it creates a really vulnerable um, opportunity where we are not distracted and God can really speak to us. So there's a reason in the Bible um, that these wilderness times were happening um, and there's a reason that these periods of drought and discomfort happen in our life as well. And they're an invitation for encounter. In the Bible we see that when people are in the desert they're feeling distant from God, that God speaks to them and his presence is the most prevalent, and they always end with him giving them an instruction, him telling, telling them a new place to go to or a new opportunity to look for. And this all happens in our life when we're feeling distant from God, the times that he meets us the most and he speaks into our life and he gives us in, instruction is when we feel burnt out and scared of what's next. 
but this discomfort creates vulnerability and that's a really important thing to remember. It can be really easy to um, feel discomfort um, and hide away or feel vulnerability. Um, I'm, I sh have sh struggled with vulnerability a lot um, and when I'm in a season where I am feeling really vulnerable, my tendency is to not want to talk to people about it and that's really easy but they're the times when God meets us the most and it's important to acknowledge that and that there's strength and authority to be gained when we're vulnerable with God. And so whether we make a hundred mistakes or we make one mistake, God's still going to love us. Um, a psalm that in seasons like this I've felt um, really called to is Psalm 23, which I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with. It starts off, actually I don't know how it starts, but it's got the, I lie down in green pastures and I don't know if that's the right word, but it's that psalm. And this psalm reiterates that when we feel distant from God is in fact when he's bringing us closer to him and that God pursues us constantly every single day. It's not a, we wake up one day and we go, hey God, I love you. And he goes, great. And that's it. It doesn't end there. Every day he's chasing after us and wanting um, to be us. And um, this psalm really reiterates that if we trust in him, that we'll be okay. I'm going to take a drink before I finish. So when you're in the wilderness, when you're in these dry periods, these desert seasons, when you're feeling really disappointed and abandoned and vulnerable, remember that you're there for a reason. God's using this space to transform you. This vulnerability and this low point is where he encounters you the most and that it is an invitation to encounter. You don't go through this so that God can distance himself from you. You go through this so that God can spend more time with you and get through to you when you're vulnerable. And he meets us and he asks us and then he gives back to us. I'm going to leave you with a quote um, that I have stuck on an orange sticky note on my desk. So family, you probably have seen it. But it's a quote that I got said to me a lot last year, um, going through year 12. One of my mentors in school said this quote to me at least once a week. And it says, no study Bible or resource will ever accelerate our desperation to explore God like pain and doubt befriend them. So when you're in these wilderness seasons, when you're in your desert period and you're feeling low and disheartened and distant from God, remember that these are the times where he encounters us the most and that pain and doubt can be a really good opportunity to get closer to him. Thank you. <laughs>